Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Senza Tempo Cani Corso. So um, I'm here with my boy Tilikum and I wanted to address um, a lot of the concerns that people had um, on my last video. So <clears throat> basically, what's up baby? <laughs> what's up baby? Basically, um, there were people that were um, concerned about me shaving my puppy. Um, and so I want to be very clear that I never said the word shave. I think that people just assumed that I was going to shave the dog whenever I said I was going to have the dog clipped. Um, but, you know, I never did say shave because I never had any intention of shaving the dog. I already have dogs with longer coats, per se, like, um, you know, Mona and Mad Mortigan, and I don't shave them, so there really wouldn't be any reason for me to shave this dog if I'm not going to shave those dogs. Um, what I was implying was that I have every intention on making sure that my dog is going to be... Um, comfortable and may have his coat maintained for doing the work that he does here in the summertime. So, um, you know, there are a lot of um, stuff that can get stuck in the fur and cause matting and it just, you know, I um, have looked it up. I've also posted the studies and um, there is no harm in, you know, maintaining the coat and, um, and lowering the um, coat level down a bit so that so that the coat can be um, better able to um, radiate the heat out or allow it to dissipate. So, just wanted to kind of um, structure, <laughs> unexpected structure, yay! Um, so anyway, so I just wanted to kind of touch on that because there's clearly some confusion there. Hey, baby. Hey, yeah, baby. Some people were more respectful. Some people chose to be super rude and condescending, which is an odd reason to be super rude and condescending, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> never, never, um, come here. Uh, never cease to be in any way surprised by the, um, anger and vitriol and bullying nature of a lot of people in the pet community, particularly, you know, companion animals. Bruh, you are distracting. So I made that sound just in case he was trying to chase after the chicken. So, cause I don't want him to do that. If that's what he's trying to do. But we're so so far so good. Um, the other thing was... Um, other people were like basically saying that, you know, I didn't get a true livestock guardian. And they were recommending these other breeds that are livestock guardians. But they are livestock guardians that are prone to roaming. And those are not good typically for... Um, working with poultry because they will just leave and um, they're better at defending against things like coyotes and um, wolves and stuff um, because they roam and they kind of maintain a territory like like say like a lion would like how a lion maintains his territory um, look at these good roosters doing their jobs So they'll have to get used to him and he'll have to get used to them. But um, he's too young to be left out here, first of all. He's smaller than the chickens are. So um, obviously if they're not safe, then he would not be safe. Um, and also, it, you know, he's not like, I think that a lot of people don't realize that there is, a, there is um, some shaping that I have to do, right? Like it's not just a pass or fail kind of thing. The dog does need direction. And so in the event that I notice him trying to play with them or something like that, I will get on to him. 
Um, and one of the things that I've decided to do is as he gets older, nowhere near where he is now, but much older, I will use a, a vibration um, correction to basically, if he's farther away from me than where I can like get to him or something, which a lot of times dogs will use um, like a certain amount of distance from you as a way of testing boundaries. And so I will have a vibration setting for if he tries to go after um, you know, the chickens or something like that, trying to play with them. And that way he knows that no matter where he's at and usually, um, you know, you can kind of curb that and it will, you know, it will, it will fade. Now, um, I want to be very clear that the breed that I have, he's, um, he's half Great Pyrenees and half, uh, Landseer, uh, Newfoundland. Now, in America, there's not a distinction between the Landseer and the Landseer Newfoundlands, um, but there is a distinction in certain parts of Europe. Um, but mine would be just uh, Newfoundland because in here in America, they don't separate the two. But I will tell you that um, the Landseer itself, that, that coloration, um, and um, I believe the dog did, his, his mother came from Canada, which is where they did this. Um, I believe they... They were always kind of a type, but they weren't separate. And then they did decide to separate them, and they named them after a painter um, that was um, really fond of them, <clears throat> this Landseer guy. And so at that point, they were considered their, dis their own distinct breed, and they used Great Pyrenees in their breedings to, <clears throat> um, to make sure that they were getting enough of the white and not the solid color dogs. So the Great Pyrenees has already been used in the creation of um, the Lancer. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I could be, it, it could be Lancer, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, um, I thought that was very interesting. Um, and there are people that say that the um, Lanziers are good livestock guardians. And in particular, they're good because they don't have the roaming instinct. And they're able to separate being in the house and, like, loving their owners and stuff like that and actually being able to come out and work with the livestock. And I was looking um, up a lot of information on them last night. So... Um, the most important thing is that I bought this puppy because his parents were already doing that job. They were already working dogs. I did not buy from a breeder. I bought from an individual with farm dogs in my community. And, um, and so, <clears throat> you know, it's just a, you know, a different situation. You know, I wanted to make sure that I had a higher likelihood of having a successful dog with the temperament I needed and the reality is that dogs that are actively doing that are more likely to produce that temperament more so than even two purebred dogs that are bred to do it, um, but, um, but like aren't actively doing it. You know what I mean? They just have that breed. So, um, and then also, like I said, there also comes down to, I think, a lot of misunderstandings about how livestock guardians work and, and specifically different kinds of livestock guardians. And a lot of people don't realize, and I was reading this whole article on it, that, um, cause I, I thought it was a flaw that the Great Pyrenees, um, roam. I thought that it was basically that, that they weren't good livestock guardians. But what I found from this guy, he said that, that, that they're supposed to, cause where they are, they defend a very large territory. There's typically, they work in groups and they defend a very large territory. And so the roaming is necessary to kind of, keep a, a boundary between the large predators and, you know, their goats and alpacas and sheep and whatever it is that they're working with. Um, but they do not do well for a situation like this because the chickens never go anywhere. They never move anywhere. And, um, and so the, if there's somebody not around um, immediately, they're going to be in danger. So... Um, and so anyway, so a dog like this with a more of a homing need, a, a, which really comes down to wanting to be around us, um, is better. And so my chickens are put away at night. Um, so there really isn't much of a need for the dog to be out all night because they are put away safely. Um, the most vulnerable times for my birds is typically, 
you know, in the mornings and then, um, you know, just periodically throughout the day. And especially when we start, when the, when the, when it starts to cool down and get into the evening time, that's whenever it's a problem. And so, um, and so anyway, so this dog should have a, a, a want to, um, guard this area. Like I said, we'll, we'll make sure that it's, um, fenced off and all that stuff. But as far as leaving him out here right now, it's just really not a practical thing. And I, and I, like I said, I don't even know that it would be right. Um, because, um, first of all, the puppy cannot thermoregulate at this age. Um, they really need time to do that. And their coat changes as well as they mature. So it really wouldn't even be safe for him to not overheat by leaving him out here like this. And he would have to be put in these pens with them. And, um, there's just too many things that can go wrong. You know, there really is. Um, so I just, I think that, I think that people have a lot of theories. They hear things and they read things and they think they know things and then they repeat things. And I think that it's very important that, um, we always try to come from a point of knowledge. And so even if you've heard something, um, before going and, and repeating it to people, I would highly recommend that you look it up and really dig deep to see if what you're telling people is actually true or, um, that it even applies to this, to that person's situation. Um, but other than that, you know, it's all gravy, baby. <laughs> so, um, chickens are all doing well. The roosters are doing their job. And um, we have not had any losses recently. So, and I've been letting them free range quite a bit. You know, the food just got really super expensive. And, um, and it just doesn't make any sense to keep them all. Especially because I've got a bunch of roosters. And usually it's the roosters that get picked off. Because they are the ones that sacrifice themselves for the hens. So I got a lot, I got a lot of roosters, <laughs> but, um, but anyway, I hope that you got it. Oh, another thing, another thing, another, I forgot another controversy. The name that I named my dog Tillicum. I never thought that so many people would take offense to a name of an animal. Um, the, it seems like people are acting like, like I named my dog after like a legit, um, like serial unaliver. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, you have to say that now. Cause you know, the, the, you gotta watch our censor censorship stuff. But I think that for me, I, I'm, I find it to be impossible to, to have that level of judgment towards an animal, um, in captivity and just an animal in general. Like somebody, somebody said the violent whale. And I was like, violent? Really? Like, I guess like technically, cause I did, I looked, I looked up the definition of violent cause I really want to make sure. Cause it didn't, it feels like a human word because for me, violence has like, um, has like a, like an accountability to it, a knowledge of what you're doing and the accountability of that and the finality of that. Like, um, and I just don't feel like you can often equate that to animals. And, um, yeah, you guys are just not going to let it go, are you? And, um, let me see if I can get my boy. Tilly, Tilly. Come here, Biggin. Come here, Biggin. <laughs> Come here, dude. No. Come here, bruh. Oh. Okay. So, um, anyway, I feel like there's like, you know, anyway, I just, it's, it's difficult for me because we're talking about an animal that, um, is a wild animal, right? Is not an obedient animal. It's not a pet. It's, it's not domesticated and you're judging it and, and basically like blaming it and ha like, like, like as if it, like it, like as if it was a person that did something wrong, um, which for me is just not fair. And I don't think it's like called for. I think it's honestly weird. Um, and I think that if you really think about this animal 
you know, and you even watch the documentary on him, um, you know, he, for a long time, he was very friendly and he was just in a very bad situation for a long time. And I think that if, you know, if you were put in a situation that is very counter to what is healthy for you for as long as he was, you'd probably not behave very well either. And I mean, you know, I mean, if he really wanted to be a jerk, I mean, <laughs> I don't, I mean, if you really know what orcas are capable of, I mean, that, that, that whale could have, um, I mean, that place could have, that, that he, they, they, they would have had to have put him down if he really wanted to be, um, that bad or whatever, you know what I mean? It just, so for me, um, I'm not going to judge the, I'm not going to judge the animal. Um, I'm not going to judge the situation. I don't even think that the woman that was taken would have judged him. None of the people that actually worked with that whale judged him. So, um, you know, it just, for me, it's really weird to, like, I just never seen it. Since when are we judging captive animals for the way they act? Like, like, I've never heard anybody get mad at, you know, the gorilla that, you know, got in trouble or the bear that, you know, like every time a zoo animal gets somebody, people always say, oh, it was their fault, blah, 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 shouldn't have been doing it, da, 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 da. Shouldn't, have, shouldn't have walked up there, shouldn't have blah, blah, blah. But for some reason, you guys want to like blame the orca whale? <laughs> like it has some special accountability or something like that? It's ridiculous. Just because... The animal is extremely intelligent doesn't mean that it's not capable of acting out irrationally um, and out of anger or frustration or whatever in a way that that animals will. You know, they're not capable of connecting the dots between what those actions are going to cause. So for me, um, it's weird and I, I don't feel that way. Uh, and, and I, and I, and I, I told a, somebody else today, I was like, you know, like, I mean, how many, how many, how many people, unalive people on a daily basis with regular names, you know what I mean? Like you're, we're all probably named after somebody who unalived somebody else or did something really heinous and horrible. Does that mean that we should just, every time that somebody unalive somebody, we take their name off, you know what I mean? Like even 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 people who have a higher body count that Tilikum still people use their names, so it's like come on man like let's not let's not go there let's not be petty, let's not um, let's not let's not go there, let's try to 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 be the part of the pet community that's capable of rational thought and um, uplifting each other and being helpful and when we offer unsolicited advice that we do so in a respectful manner that um, you know that is that is not demeaning or dismissive and that is not repetitive right like if if you want to make a comment about something how about taking a look at the comment section and just checking out and seeing if somebody else has already said it because if somebody else has already said it and then obviously there's no reason for everybody to keep saying the exact same thing because then it it becomes harder to hear the message um but it becomes even worse whenever what is being told isn't even accurate information um so Anyway, that's all I have to say about it. It's a, it's a bit of a weird, it ended up being a bit of a weird um, situation, but I'm hoping that we can all move past that now and have a good day. So um, I'm going to sign off and I'm going to go and um, take uh, this puppy over to go see Reese Cup and I'll probably grab Asia and um, Mona and do a little bit of um, training socialization there. I think I want to introduce Blondie um, to Asia today. So anyway, I got to go pick them up and I'll do a video of her puppies while I'm there. And then I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.